Okay, so I'm going to be using this reference picture as a general guide to what I'm going to paint. And firstly, we'll get in a sketch. And what I like about this photo is that there's areas of light just running through it, which we can basically indicate in some lighter colors. So what I'm going to do is just draw out this path of um, this area of light, I suppose, that comes across all down here. And... Um, this here I'm actually just marking out very lightly and we can indicate that with some dry brush over the top of lighter paint. But apart from that, the rest of the painting you can just get in quite loosely and you know a lot of the mountains and things, I'm actually going to change it up so that we've got um, just a bit higher sort of mountains that just come in at more of an angle like this rather than um, start from the bottom and just get that coming through like that for one of them the other side here and that's coming up little mountains and things here in the foreground uh, background as well which we'll get in for that but just a little sketch that's all you need and you're pretty much ready to go so Starting off firstly by wetting the entire sheet of paper and I'm using a very large, a very large um, screw mop brush. There's already some water, um, there's already some blue paint from my last wash left in here. So what I'm actually going to do is um, go all the way through like this just wet the entire sheet of paper bring this all the way down so that we've got a nice uniform shade through what I'm going to do over here though is I just want to add in a bit of yellow these areas here to indicate just the path of um, light and things. So that's all you want to do, just a little splash of yellow there, maybe a bit in the background if you want as well. Comes down like about there, a bit in the corner. It really doesn't matter, it's just a bit of warmth that you're adding in. That's all. And we'll carry this down the page like that and um, finish it off okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start getting in some darker colors in the sky and picking up some cobalt blue I'm going to use some cobalt blue and a bit of cerulean blue Let's start off around here, okay, and just going to add in this mix in the corners, maybe a tiny bit of purple, if you can mix some red into your blues as well, that's going to keep things interesting, and move this down the page, also get in a few marks on the left hand side the page two near the top just need it to be pretty dark in the corners let's try a bit of cerulean mixed with um, yellow like that here we go and just carrying this wash down the page so as we move further down as well, what we want to do is just start adding in um, just a little bit of warmth running through. So I'm just using um, some of the reds actually that are left over in the palette to get in some inconsistencies and interesting cloud shapes running through. Maybe just whatever I've got on here. Um, but with that said, I had some red on there before, so moving down the page like this, 
and um, around this area this is where you want to just be a bit more careful and I'm going to start getting some uh, yellow ochre here maybe a bit of orange tiny bit of orange and yellow mixed up so just drop that in here like that just lighten it up like there a bit more warmth running through this area is important and um, just carry that down the page there okay a bit more yellow actually like that and um, it's about all you want to do just keep it light Actually, go a bit further down here. It turns green anyway. Okay. And um, where the sky ends, about here, we're just going to add in again just a bit of this warmth, a bit of orange, tiny bit of orange, tiny bit of um, yellow, and mix that in with the previous uh, wash. Get that to blend nicely together, do its thing. Okay, so carry this down the page. A bit more yellow here. That. Great. I'm going to swap to this smaller brush, smaller calligraphy brush, and start picking up a bit of yellow again to drop further down here. And it's just going to kind of appear greenish because I've got some blue mixed into the palette anyway. But we'll just um, just mark out some of the mountains, some lighter areas of the mountains like that. This area is going to be darker. Um, in the foreground later anyway, so I don't need to do too much work over there. main thing is that we just get in um, a bit of mixing for the sky, and also what I want to do is get in some darker clouds further up. So I'm going to mix up a bit of blue and uh, a bit of red on the palette to just get a, uh, some kind of purplish color. And quite thick not too thick but just a bit more than what it what it is on the paper we're just going to drop in some areas of paint like this and we're just going to indicate some clouds running through Prussian blue and a tiny bit of red just let it do its thing like that and remember to leave in some of that previous wash as well. It's going to make it look a lot more interesting. And um, a bit more on the left hand side as well. It's starting to dry off near the top, so you have to be careful. Now I'm just um, I'm trying to be mindful not to get too bogged down. Uh, just little indications like that. It's going to help. And uh, sort of these little bits and pieces down the bottom. I just want to add little um, spots like this just to indicate smaller clouds or things like that. And um, before I forget, just get in some darker areas on the left hand side too. Yeah. Bit of, tiny bit of sepia running through there as well. Sepia and a bit of that Prussian blue just running through some areas at the top. While it's still wet, really, that's the best time to do this sort of stuff. 
Okay. Let that all melt in. And um, the great thing about clouds is that they often have a little kind of shadow underneath. So that's something that you just have to emphasize. So in little bottom areas like that, you can just touch at the bottom with some paint and um, just gives it a bit more body. But, uh, you know, you notice I'm doing it quite quickly because I do want this all to work wet into wet. So it just looks much too harsh if you start um, indicating later on and it's already dried so it's about all I'm gonna do I think for the clouds a bit of dry brush for that one sort of up the top there but apart from that everything's all done wet into wet and um, just picking up a little bit of bit of water just flick a bit onto the into the paper like that just to get in some little um, textures running through I thought that might who knows if this is going to work but um, just a little bit of water like that and now what I'm going to do is start to get in some of these mountains in the background so we'll pick up a bit of cerulean blue and maybe a bit of cobalt mixed together and and I'll just give this a try here. There's a mountain here in the background, so just want to get a little indication like that. Then we've got um, sort of areas here which are surrounded by light and just can indicate very loosely like that. Yeah, and uh, let's have a look here. I'm really trying to time this all because I want this section at the back to be a lot looser, and then we've got some sharper bits of mountains cutting in front. So, so something you've got to keep in mind. darker up the front here in a mid ground going in with Prussian blue and uh, maybe a bit of sap green let's pop in a bit of sap green in here like that fantastic okay and um, let these colors mix on the paper as well that's one of my big tips is you can just get some really really um, interesting mixes this way okay do you think that one needs to be darker just where it touches the sky so I'll redo a tiny bit of that area like that to make it look a bit sharper too so I move down the page okay a bit more Prussian blue maybe a bit of brown mixed in there as well so this mountain really important to just be paying attention to the values even at this stage and um, you know we'll go through the mountains on the left hand side now let's get some of this Prussian blue mixed in with the green and just start outlining this area of the mountains a little bit of, uh, of this darker color as well. A bit of sepia. Okay, and that kind of comes down here and starts mixing in. So we'll try to get in some sharper areas, say on the side like that. A bit more of this green sap green coming in let's try some blue a little bit of blue here oops where is it a bit of blue that coming in and um, 
this is where we want to do a little bit of dry brushing and um, to indicate some of these areas of light could be just as so simple as that but the um, main thing is we've got this little path that comes in like that and finishes around here we can carry it further down to be honest but we're just going to leave some of those white spots here in the paper like that and paint around them so just get some more darkness going on this is actually a mountain that cuts in front of the one at the back so darken up this area a little bit more to indicate that um, might have to go back into it again later on and but we'll see how we go okay great and um, now remembering to leave this little path running through and just darken up areas here let's get in a bit of this green it's actually a lot darker near the front okay all right this lighter around this section this Going to bring this whole wash further down. Let's swap to this brush quickly. Get in some larger brush strokes like that. Just picking up some bits and pieces of paint off the palette. Don't know what color this is. Doesn't matter. Okay, blend this bit in, bring this down the page. But we're going to have to go over this with another layer anyway. Okay, this has to be darker, so let's get a bit of blue running through here. Okay, and we'll join this all up like that. Okay, great. And what we can do is just indicate also um, some smaller trees and things in blue. So just picking up a bit of additional paint and seeing maybe some areas where you know, I can just drop in some trees or things like that. Um, especially around this path, I think that's going to help to um, imply, uh, you know, a path running through here. So, oops, a bit too big. But, um, something like that smaller looking trees we can mix a bit of green into it as well but a bit of brown doesn't quite matter as long as it's darker Add some little ones here, little trees. We're making things up at the moment. And um, that's it. Let's 
So I'm going to give this a really quick try off. Okay, so last part of the painting, what we're going to do is really just get in some of these indications of darker areas surrounding um, these sort of lightened paths. And I might get in a bit of darkness here on the side of this mountain and some of these trees in the foreground. So firstly, I'm just going to be picking up this uh, large calligraphy brush and I'm going to mix together some green. I've got some um, dark green here. This is a hooker's green, actually. And I'm going to mix that with a bit of cobalt blue. It really doesn't matter too much. Just need to get a darker color. And um, I'm going to start off around here and let's just start working into this area like that. Just to get this area, this little area of um, smaller mountains coming down here, just like that. And um, so it comes further down here and we've got a, another sort of mountain coming up the back like this and um, sort of blends in there but we've got this sort of larger bit that runs up here and comes down so just want to indicate that area and um, just follow that along here okay and uh, you know, we've got lots of little bits of light and things. I'm not going to worry too much about. Just need to leave some areas. And a bit more of this blue mixed in with the green. Carry this uh, further down the page. Like that. And using this to kind of shape the area of the path as well so really just this area here running through we need to make it darker to emphasize that that's really the trick oops there and even a bit of light through here that we can indicate as well There we go, and um, this section here actually needs to be darker. I'm thinking I might actually glaze over it with a bit of green. It's just not dark enough. So we will do a bit of indicating. That. And Again, just leave out some of this yellow. Just indicating things that are going on here. Go. Right. Bit of blue. Especially even on this side here. the blue green color and um, sort of spreads up here to where there's a tree and two trees popping up from the side like that and uh, just carrying this making a kind of impression of a tree I guess coming down the front want to make it a lot darker just want to make it a bit more darker here as we move further down the front of the page and I'm adding in some more Prussian blue into this mix to just emphasize that darkness Actually in the corners just add in a bit of sepia like that blue
I'm going to just make up some tree branches or something there and um, really this area again is kind of mixed in we've got some negative shapes and we've got some uh, darker shapes just running behind as well so I'm just going to try to blend a bit more in this area and um, get in some indications of some trees here as well and we can just do the same thing for some of these areas of the mountains because it's not quite uh, dark enough in some areas that bit more green running through here and some cobalt blue as well like that just trying to get in some darker kind of trees or shapes through the front of the painting that's all you need to do Darken this all down. It's a bit more blue in the corners. Some sepia and blue. That. There. This bottom area. Darken that up as well. Let's try it. Just add a teeny bit of blue in there to encourage it to mix it around. Okay. We can just use this brush. Now to just add in indications of some trees and things like that running into the distance and uh, maybe some wet on one wet on wet ones here too. Like that. Okay. Some more darkness in the corner. Could be branches or something like that. Get a bit of an indication of some uh, branches coming up through the corner there. Like that. Uh, maybe a bit here as well. Let's have a look. Just a little indication.
Okay, and um, last thing I want to do is just add in some little birds. trees here and there and um, a little bit of scratching out to finish it off maybe just some yeah, loose kind of branches like this Check out these tutorials down the side here. I've got a couple of playlists that will help you get some ideas and improve your watercolors.